We use a visual schedule that explains all of the tasks that are going to be within the session. Um, this helps the pupils be more independent because they can refer to the schedule on their own. They don't necessarily need us to be following them everywhere telling them what to do. Um, and it also gives that clear structure so the pupil knows what's expected from them right from the beginning, they know how many tasks they have to complete, um, how many steps they have to fulfil and that just helps keep their attention and focus and helps keep them engaged throughout the whole session. Something that also can help the pupils' independence and help them fully engage with the task is when the task is presented visually so where it's very clear before you begin what you need to do and how many steps there are um, and also there's a visual representation of moving through the task so we often like to use a left to right structure so the stuff that needs to be done is on the left the pupil works on it in front of them and then when it's finished it moves to the right Having the visual schedule, um, it, it's important that the pupil actually engages with it as well. So us as staff are not just walking around holding it against our chest where they can't see. They need to be able to see it. Um, we should be prompting them to look at it, to read it themselves if they can, and also them taking that active step of ticking it off. Because um, again, that's it's the independence. It's it's even more clear to them how far they are through what they're supposed to be doing um, and yeah it, primarily those visual schedules are for the pupil not for staff um, so it needs to be presented in a way that they can access as well that will look different for different pupils we weren't verbally prompting him very much we weren't speaking to him a great deal um, so instead we were trying to lean into the visuals that we had, so the schedule, the help card, the choice board at the till, although that didn't work very well because he just took what he wanted. Um, and we were using a lot of gestures as well. Um, so it's just following that language reduction strategy because actually what we know is it, it, talking to somebody can be overloading for them. Um, if people have language difficulties, it that in itself can be a distraction and it might not actually help them that much so when you're doing a practical activity if it's set out very visual and clear you've got your visuals you shouldn't need to talk to them that much and actually it's better possibly better if you don't it's important to keep the consistency of the session as well so the tasks that he was doing which were in yellow on the task sheet we swap those around the order, we sometimes add in a different one, swap one out. But the session's always book ended with the same thing, so he always comes in, takes off his coat and bag, signs in, puts his apron on, and then at the end he always chooses a reward from the fridge, uh, puts the bag and coat back on, takes the apron off, puts the bag and coat back on, and signs in and out, and that never changes. Um, so it's important to keep those anchors of consistent structure and then you have that bit of space to play around in the middle with what and how you're asking somebody to do it um, but keeping those consistent bookends really helps with somebody accessing the session maintaining the focus it did take him quite a long time to execute some of the tasks um, to initiate them uh, and to keep following them through and I think what people might notice is that me and Gary just tended to step back and give time and space we didn't initially prompt we didn't prompt him again unless he'd been off task for quite a long time and um, so what we were doing there was just giving processing time because we if we're confident in how the task is presented and how um, that's been conveyed to him we know that he knows what he needs to do he just needs time to process it. So we're stepping back, waiting, being very, very patient, not prompting more is actually more helpful for him. Because sometimes if you come and start prompting him again, he has to reprocess all those cues and it can take even longer. Next, take, take out the brush.